Hey everyone, I'd love to introduce you to my new friends from Paleo Valley, um, Autumn and Chad Smith. Chad and I met a few months ago at a mastermind and he told me about this amazing snack that he has and that they formulated and that opened a whole bigger conversation around snacks and what goes inside snacks and he started throwing things um, around and he said, you know, like we don't use things like citric acid and I thought, wait, citric acid wasn't really all that bad. It's kind of a natural occurring substance was the big deal. And then when he let me try his, um, the, uh, the sticks, which we'll talk about it later, um, it completely reminded me of um, what's called in Polish cabanos, which is a form of like everybody I think in America knows kielbasa, the Polish sausage. So it's like the same version, but it's smaller, it's thinner, it's more flavorful, it's drier, and it, it's, it, it, you can travel with it even in summer over a period of days. And so that completely reminded me of that. And I also realized that back in the day, you know, in the, when Poland was a communist country, we really didn't have all these chemicals in order to preserve food. And so food was preserved in the most natural way possible. And that reminded me so much of just back in the day, of really using good quality food that wasn't using any crap in it basically, that everybody was enjoying, that was, you, you, could, you could walk around with it, you could travel with it for a period of time and that it wouldn't go bad. And so I wanted to introduce you to Autumn Smith, who's one of the partners in Paleo Valley. And I invited her to talk to us about how do you become snack savvy? Like to really understand what goes on inside, um, what, what, what people are hiding in snacks and what is it that we should be mindful of. But before we do that, one of the things, welcome Autumn. <laughs> Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. One of the things I would love to start off with is to really for you to tell us in a very short version of your story because it really was a starting point of how you guys built your company, right? Yeah, it absolutely was. It was everything. It was the, the sole reason we pretty much started the company. And what happened was I'm a lifelong health enthusiast. And um, it was about in my teens that I started really suffering from some digestive issues. And because I saw so many countless experts and they all told me the same thing, that basically there was nothing that I could do about it, I just kind of learned to live with the pain. And I kind of forgot during that period what it meant to be well. And it wasn't until I met my handsome husband who you can see in the photo that he would see the distension every night because literally I looked like a fitness trainer during the day because I was and then at night I would look like this I mean not quite as bad because I am nine months pregnant here but it was pretty much representative of what I was experiencing and so he just thought that wasn't good enough and he we went to the doctor one last time they gave us the same we can't do anything about it so he researched tirelessly we came upon the paleo diet and we implemented his principles for 30 days and my digestive issues that I had suffered for for 15 years, they were gone. So we shit, I know it's incredible. And I, my anxiety also lifted and I just, I just felt like a new person. And I so knew. Let, let me ask you, what was your, what were your food sensitivities? Or what, oh, was the ca what were the causes of your digestive issues? Well, I think that I had a number of them. I think gluten was one of the big ones because I remember as a child just being so drawn to bread and feeling like I could never give it up, which is often indicative of having a food sensitivity. But the one that was really, it changed my life the most was garlic. Mm -hmm. And I had that cystic acne um, when I was, you know, 27, 25, I just could not figure it out. And if it weren't for IgG food sensitivity testing, I wouldn't have because it's one of the most healthy foods for most people. But yeah, that was an issue. I also found out I had candida and a parasite. So I had a number of things going on. Right. And um, the paleo diet just kind of helped me peel back those layers. But once I realized the healing power of food, I had a really important decision to make. So I decided to quit the dream job. I was working uh, for fitness mogul Tracy Anderson and touring the world with Jennifer Lopez. And I wanted to share this because it's so powerful and I just don't think enough people make the connection. So we found a Paleo Valley with, um, well, actually first I went and got a master's degree in holistic nutri nutrition and became a certified eating psychology coach. And then we founded Paleo Valley with my husband, with his brother, and our fantastic friend, Matthew. And our goal is just to get high quality food into as many hands as possible. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we are today. And I'm excited to share a few insider's tips on how to choose really, really savvy snacks. Awesome. Let's go for it. Okay. So my five tips to savvy snacking. And number one is that food is not 
fuel, but it's information. And I think a lot of people today look at food and they, they focus on those macronutrients. And well, that can tell you, you know, the carbs, fats, and the proteins, they can tell you what this food is going to do to your blood sugar. I think they miss the bigger picture because a bowl of berries and a donut, they're going to have very, very different metabolic consequences, as I'm sure all your listeners already know. And focusing too narrowly on those macronutrients will lead you to eating things that are highly processed and things that have sugar alcohols or sugar or sweeteners or artificial sweeteners and things like that. And so what you really want to do is make sure the ingredients are mother nature derived. You just look at that ingredient deck and make sure that your grandmother would recognize these ingredients and that you don't need a dictionary to decipher them. And it seems obvious, but I just see far too many people focusing on those calories and carbs and protein and it's just outdated and we just need to bring it up a notch. So that's my first tip. My second one, and I think this is really important, is not to get too caught up in the buzzwords. Uh, Basically, when you see a package, that's their marketers are going to just put the best foot forward. It's like meeting someone on a first date. You're going to see it's gluten-free, it's soy-free, it's dairy-free, but then don't forget to turn it around and look at what it does contain because that's the biggest gap we saw in the market. That's why we wanted to create our products because we saw gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free foods, but they were just skeletonized versions. They didn't have any nutrients. They were also nutrient-free and so they didn't promote thriving health. And you know, when you eat a food that doesn't offer your body anything, it'll actually draw upon your own nutrient reserves in order to right. use it. And so yeah, you're no better off than before you began. And this is just a, an example of a bar that I used to eat all the time. I see a lot of health conscious people eating it. And when you look at it, they're, uh, they're offering it as a weight loss bar. It has high amounts of protein, low amounts of sugar. But when you look at the ingredient deck, you see things like soy protein isolate, maltitol, canola oil, natural flavors, which can include scary amount of things, including MSG. And you notice there's just a lot of soy to wreak havoc on your hormones, GMOs in that canola oil, which is also rancid and inflammation producing, but nothing, nothing that's going to offer your body anything. So again, turning over that deck, making sure that you see things like organic berries, raw honey, sprouted almonds, just things that we all know will promote thriving health as well as making sure that they're free of those common dietary allergens. Right. And so, yeah. My third point is to count sugar like it's your job. And this right here is my beautiful sister. And this starting to be really vigilant about her sugar intake was the secret sauce to her losing 30 pounds. She had tried everything, Weight Watchers, you name it, but it wasn't because she was sitting down and eating donuts. So she she never thought to really address the sugar, but it was just those hidden sources of sugar. And I think health food bars are a huge hidden source of sugar. So what I like to say is that if it has more than five to seven grams of sugar, um, just don't even don't even consider it. It shouldn't be an option really after that point. It's also important to know that food manufacturers at this point in time don't have to differentiate between the sugar from a berry and the sugar from high fructose corn syrup. It's all just going to end up on that little sugar label. So make sure again to turn that in de- ingredient deck around. Lastly. They can say no added sugar on the front and still use things like sugar, alcohol, artificial sweeteners, and most troublesome to me, apple juice concentrate, which seems innocuous. And I think a lot of moms see that front package and then they have apple juice concentrate. It seems like, how bad could that be? But again, it has identical metabolic consequences for poor kids. So you just, my two point check, again, five to seven grams or below is ideal. It's not going to send your blood sugar on a roller coaster, wreak havoc on your hormones, and then making sure again, they're from mother nature drive sources. So Autumn, let me just give clarity on the apple. Did you say apple juice concentrates? Yeah. So is this because of the how processed it is, you're saying it has got, it looks like high, high fructose corn syrup? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, basically because of the level of processing, you know, when you wow. remove um, fruit from its fiber and all of those enzymes and everything that it was packaged with, that Mother Nature made it with for your body to be able to use slowly, mm-hmm. um, it does just become a rapidly absorbed form of sugar. And it's, a, it's just a little loophole. They can just shove that oh. apple juice concentrate in and yeah, but it's no oh. better. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm learning something new again today from you. <laughs> I'm so glad. Okay. So number four is that organic ingredients matter. And I know you have a really sophisticated subscribership and um, we don't need to belabor the point, but GMOs, long-term effects are unknown. In animal studies, they're really not pretty. We're talking kidney disorder, reproductive issues, even tumors. And then glyphosate, which is used on GMOs, is actually a probable carcinogen. The World Health Organization just acknowledged that. And uh, a friend of ours, Dr. Stephanie Seneff, a senior researcher at MIT, has also linked it to diseases like celiac disease, autism, even heart disease, wow. because they interfere with some of the very, very basic bodily processes like detoxification and like our gut bacteria. They wreak havoc on both those processes, which can pretty much create any disease dependent upon where your weak, weak link is in the chain. So we got to make sure that organic ingredients are key though, and that you don't necessarily, it doesn't have to be certified organic because that's a really expensive process. And food manufacturers like we, like myself, we want to get high quality food into as many hands as possible. And so when we skip that certification, we can pass those savings on to you. And just kind of to illustrate this point, we've been waiting for our greens powder for about a year. It's been sitting in a warehouse just waiting for this certification, even though every single ingredient is organic. So don't be scared off if it doesn't say certified organic. Just turn over that ingredient deck and make sure each and every individual ingredient is organic. Right. Then it's a totally safe option. Well, yeah. one, of the, one of the things um, I want to share is that I was very impressed with was when Chad was telling me about the extent you guys go to in, in order to find um, – really good quality food, right? I mean, like beef that's grain finished and not, sorry, that's grass finished and got grain finished, right? And, exactly. and like, I think you mentioned that you guys had to make so many calls and then finally found somebody in, is it Wisconsin or Wyoming? Wisconsin, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Who, who will comply with your, and I mean, there was just really, I mean, it was quite quite shocking because your requirement was just so straightforward. All you wanted was just beef from a cow that wasn't grain fat at the end of the day, right? In the past yeah. month. That's all you wanted. And you had to make, what did you say, 200 phone calls in order to find that farmer? That was in regards to our processing um, because when we moved away from the citric acid and lactic acid process, which we're going to talk about in a second, and wanted someone to ferment them, but it's not lucrative because it takes four to five times longer. We actually ferment every stick for 12 hours. And so, yes, I mean, the process to source all of these really high, ingredient, high quality ingredients was, it was a long one for sure. And you think eating organic, that sounds simple enough, but a lot of food manufacturers just aren't implementing it. And they're, they're just not using organic ingredients because of these hurdles that you have to jump through, or the hoops rather. Yeah. Um, so it's not an easy process. Um, and to my next point, that is my next point, is just to be aware and be mindful of the processing of a product. Uh, you can have perfect ingredients, but then if you apply high heat and temperature, it just completely changes it. It alters the proteins. They become denatured. The fatty acids can become rancid, especially if you're using the fragile ones like uh, canola oil or sunflower oil, corn oil, soy oil, all of those things. And so you just have to look for cold temperature processed or low if it's an animal product and just make sure that you or maybe even fermentation which we're going to be talking about in a second but just just like we said be mindful of what they're doing and if if it's not obvious on the package talk to the manufacturer figure out who's making the product and yeah. um yeah especially yeah. if this is something you're eating often so i want to just mention this about the processing part because i think it's really important you know like sometimes um i would work with somebody and the person says you know i'm still getting jittery and i'm getting my sugar levels drop and i'm eating quinoa but then it turns out she's actually eating quinoa flakes, which is a height, which is a, a few steps of processing from the actual whole grain of quinoa, right? And you can see how your body completely responds to it in a different way when you eat mm. quinoa flakes, basically sending you your sugar levels high up really quickly versus if you were eating quinoa. And and you know, and it's pretty much the same analogy as you would use for. Um, to say, you know, that poppy seed and heroin is the same thing. It is not because heroin is obviously the outcome of, um, of a poppy seed, 
but it is an extensive processing that alters the substance so much so that poppy seed is a totally innocent food that we can enjoy versus heroin, we all know what it can do to us, right? So the processing really does matter a lot, even though it all started from natural thing. I mean, the most nasty chemicals all come from something natural at the end of the day, because, you know, I mean, where else would it come from, yeah. right? So it's the processing that really matters. So thanks for bringing this up. Yeah, thanks for driving that point home. And I just kind of wanted to tell you about our story in the creation of our flagship product, our 100% grass finish beef steak, because it really, it just mirrors all of these points that I'm talking about. And so when we started Paleo Valley, like I said, it wasn't so that we could make a fortune and retire by the time we were 40. We just really wanted to provide good quality snacks for people um, that went beyond just making you feel full and waiting for until the next meal. Like we really want to afford vibrant health to everyone. And so we really got excited about this. We wanted to take every step possible to source the highest quality ingredients. And we started with our grass finished beef, obviously, because 95% of people who say grass fed, um, it's not grass finished. And that's a really important distinction because even if the cow is fed grains for the last 30 days, it just negates a lot of those beneficial effects. It can still have an inflammatory profile. And recent research conducted in 2010 showed that grass-finished beef has higher levels of vitamin B, higher levels of vitamin E, a better antioxidant profile, more a less inflammatory fatty acid ratio. Ratio and my favorite benefit is Dr. Felice Jacka out of the um, I think she's at Deakin University in Australia. She found that red meat, high quality red meat, not conventionally red meat, is the most anxiety protective food of all. And she was really surprised by that finding. I know, I was shocked. Um, but that the more red meat you eat, the less anxiety you'll feel. And so given my history with anxiety, that made me really excited. And that's kind of what brought us to this grass-fed beef stick. So we did that. And then what we did was we started with organic spices as well because a lot of people don't use organic spices. A lot of them are irradiated, which kind of negates the beneficial effects of those antioxidants, which we all want the spices for in the first place. And they can also use other chemicals and preservatives. So we just made sure that wasn't happening. But the biggest difference, like we were saying before, is the processing. And I don't think a lot of people know it, but almost every beef stick on the market today it is made with a process that actually is, it says citric acid on the label and lactic acid or encapsulated citric acid and encapsulated lactic acid. And, but, but the USDA doesn't mandate that it actually says encapsulated. It can just say citric acid or lactic acid. And if you're like me, I look at that and I think, wow, yeah, made from lemons or maybe limes. It's innocuous, but that's not the case at all. And a lot of the times it's made it's created on, on a mold, actually, um, on GMO corn often. And so, yes, this process, it can be derived from natural sources. But as of 1919, I believe, the majority of uh, the citric acid made in this country is actually derived from the mold, which mm -hmm. who wants to eat that? I definitely don't. And that's not even the worst part because then they take that and then they encapsulate it in with hydrogenated oils. And everyone kind of already knows hydrogenated oils, they're trans fat, they're linked to heart disease, blood pressure issues, cholesterol issues, even Alzheimer's. They're just, they're no bueno. And so we knew we have to do this another way. There has to be a better way. And so we looked to our ancestors. People have been preserving meat for for literally thousands of years. And so we just use fermentation. And all we do is uh, use a starter culture, a non-dairy starter culture, and then the beef sticks are actually fermented for 12 hours. And we not only can avoid all those freaky chemicals, but it actually yields a billion probiotics, which wow. supports gut health. Yeah, it was really, really surprising. We had them analyzed twice. It ranged from 675 million per stick up to a billion. And we did have a DNA test run, and it is um, full of bacteria B. bacillus, Humilis, which probably not a lot of people have heard about, but it is known to be an antagonistic species to pathogenic bacteria. Oh, wow. So it's going to, yeah, it crowds out those, um, the bad bacteria. That's and amazing. Bacteria. Yeah. So 
So that's what we did. And we're just now trying to tell people about this distinction because it, it really does matter for your health. One beef stick can look perfect and then say citric acid and be a source of hydrogenated oils and GMOs. So, so just, just, to, just to make it clear, so citric acid and lactic acid are used as preservatives in um, some of the meat products. Is that correct? That's right. Yes. They're used to drop the pH low enough to preserve the product. And they become these little beads and then they're just added and then they drop the, and then they melt into the product. And then right. it drops the pH. So, so I think you and I chatted about this before that you can have naturally derived citric acid, right? Um, that doesn't come from GMO, but we wouldn't know the difference whether it came from a GMO or whether it was naturally derived from somewhere. Is that correct? That's the problem. Yeah, the USDA does not require that that distinction is made. And like I said, it can be derived from lemons and limes, and that's what people think, but it's a more expensive process. And so most of the time, the vast majority of the time, it is created using this, this mold and the bacteria. Right, right. And, you know, and then the other thing that was interesting, you mentioned um, at one point when we were talking is that before recording this is that um, you have to have like what 95% ingredients that are organic, right? And then the, the other five, which easily citric acid could fall into, can fly under the radar at 5% or even less, um, doesn't have to be organic and, and uh, fall into that. And so, you know, for some people say, it will say, well, what's the big deal? You know, it's only such a small percentage. But the truth is there are some people who are really sensitive to that. And... Mm. And, and a prolonged period of time of usage that we just don't really know what, what it does to us. So anyway, that's the reason why I love your product because it totally reminds me of stuff that I grew up with and I'm pretty sure they had no, no encapsulated lactic acid because there was no chemical um, sophistication, if you like, you know? <laughs> right. um, yeah. to, I mean, we were a poor communist country for the longest time, right? So, um, so that's why I, I think your product is awesome. So why don't you... Do you have the product with you to show us how the sticks look like? I do. It's right here. This is what they look like in real life. And um, then you'll see on the screen. Do you want to turn it, turn it around for us to see the other side? Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the here actual stick. That's the actual stick. It's not like jerky. I think people often are surprised by what it tastes like because it has a moistness and a little snap. And yeah, um, yeah it's not going to tire your jaw. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we have right now, we have an original, which is nice, smokery, smoky and peppery flavor, jalapeno, which is actually surprisingly mild with a kick on the end. But soon we have a summer sausage and garlic summer sausage, and they're, they're life-changing, especially so if how, you like something. I'm curious, how do, you, um, how do you eat the, summer, uh, the garlic summer sausage when you have a garlic intolerance? That's the thing. I don't. I actually can't eat any of the beef sticks except for that sweet little summer sausage one. That's the one they made for me. And that's the only one without garlic. We are currently working on an autoimmune protocol friendly one that okay. will also, but um, yeah, that's the only one I can eat the summer sausage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. And we are offering your listeners a, a nice deal today. So if you go to paleovalley.com slash Magdalena, you're going to get 30% off just so you can try them out we'd love to hear your feedback um did you love them did your kids love them or the things you think we could improve upon any and all feedback is welcome awesome thank you so much awesome you know um i hope you guys take advantage of the special offer because really it's it's uh, this is an opportunity for us to support causes like this businesses like that that really do it from a place of heart and goodness and no shortcuts and um and i mean this stick just tastes so incredibly good like you said, I mean, it's just the moisture of it. It's just, it melts in your mouth and you think like, wow, you know, and let's not forget to mention that you do not have to refrigerate these and um, they can be what, four months, right? Is the shelf life without refrigeration? Yeah, and it's likely that that's actually longer. It's six months from the time of manufacture. I just give us a little wiggle room just, you know, to make us sure they get to your right. door. But yeah, if you refrigerate or freeze, you can significantly extend the shelf life, probably up to about a year. Awesome. Thank you so much, um, Autumn. This was really great. And you guys, I hope you take advantage of this. And um, I'll see you on the next video. It's going to be coming up about some great food very soon. Bye for now.